Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio, and today we are mucking around with green stuff again, because uh, I keep getting requests. And today we're going to be mucking around making some Nurgle chimneys, and I'll put it right out there, I am not a great sculptor, but according to our subscribers, that's why they enjoy our um, green stuff tutorials, because I'm not a legendary sculptor, so what I do, everyone else can follow along with, and maybe get some ideas from. Now the first thing I've done here, this was a, a sort of a demo, um, mucking around with ideas will show a better result at the end of the video and take these techniques that we're going to use and uh, put them into practice on a smaller scale so all I've done here is flatten out a piece of green stuff and then roll it up and then let it set for 24 hours I made a few of these and can, then I can carve that in half and uh, I've got two parts there now I didn't want a straight tube here you could use a tube if you wanted to to build around because these are just going to be templates for the larger scale ones that we're going to muck around with because we want some textures on these. So I've glued a cocktail stick in there uh, just so I can put it on the cork stand so I've got something to work with. And I want to cut another set of green stuff around about the same size. So now I've got something solid to work with we can wrap materials and textures around it. Now when doing this, as you can see there, that was a bit short. I should, should leave more overhang on this so you can feed it over the top and make the chimney look a bit more round and natural. All I'm doing for this texture at the moment is just pushing the Stanley knife blade in ever so slightly to make some grooves and we're going to take that apart later on and stretch it around then we're going to use our sculpting tools to uh, feed it in to the top of the chimney. This uh, I'll probably keep this piece around now I've seen the result of it uh, just for texturing random bits of green stuff be careful not to push too deep into these as you can see I uh, managed to split that one accidentally and what I've done at the very tips of these lines I've actually sliced all the way through that and that's so you can fold them over on themselves and push them in then I'm going to overlay that around this chimney and uh, you can see that uh, having those uh, little lines cut in there does make it easier to fold those back in. This is the sort of thing you see on the back of Typhus and on the back of um, Hellbrutes other random Nurgle models like that. Now this isn't precise, this was just me mucking around with the uh, first, first texture and the first idea. Also I think some of the green stuff tutorials I do are going to be moved to vlogs soon depending on um, how, our subscribers, how our subscribers feel about that one. And what I'm doing here is I'm now just using a flat piece of sculpting tool and widening those lines ever so slightly. At this point, you should just be able to fiddle around with it while it sets on there. You can tear parts off, push it around, and you can obviously feed tentacles and other stuff in there. But it's the top of the chimney I was really focused on with this one. I was just mucking around with these textures. But you do get a nice sort of shape. And in a sec, I'm going to take that and uh, it looked too straight. So I'm going to push the bottom end back up so it's not stuck. And we're also going to end up twisting the whole texture as well. This is just one way of getting the grooves into your, into your chimney. And then we're going to twist that ever so slightly uh, to one side just stops it looking straight and plain um, and we could build the flesh up around these as well so they follow that sort of pattern so it looks like the flesh is twisting as it's growing I'm not going to go all the way around the other side of this chimney sort of thing I say chimney, it could be like an opening for like bugs to crawl out of or something like you get on the back of typhus but now you've twisted it all the green stuff has manoeuvred around so you can re-sculpt that and uh, push it around Basically just play around with it for a while until you get a result that you're happy with. Now one of the other things I decided to do was just see what happened if I uh, bulked the top part up. Because the, other, the one we've just done looks a little bit flat at the top, it didn't have enough overhang. Uh, I think it should be more swollen at the top, so I started mucking around with that idea as well. And uh, this one does work, 
kind of well. Again, we're going to be overlaying stuff over the top of it. So if you wanted to do this a little bit better than I did, you would let all that set. Maybe smooth it off a bit into the shape. Let it set and then sculpt some other parts on. I'm going to stick some uh, green stuff balls on as well uh, for warts. And what we're going to do is what I do in most of my green stuff tutorials. We're going to get some more green stuff. We're going to use the texture on it. And then we're going to put that over the top of everything and sculpt it down. Uh, just to get that three-dimensional sort of feel. Sort of measuring that up at the moment with uh, my tool to see how big of a hole I need to make for those warts to show through. So I always build everything up in layers. Do a, do a layer of the sculpt and then build stuff over it. It gives you a hard surface to work against. Uh, as I said, I'm not a master sculptor. What I'm doing here is going underneath the green stuff and then pulling it back on itself. Then measuring it up to make sure the warts will poke through that. I'm going to cut that down to a reasonable size since this is just a, a prototype or an idea. And it's uh, not the finished result. Then what we do with that is feed that over the top and then into the chimney as well. So if I did more on this I would... Um, add more and more different layers around the edges and you can obviously pull the green stuff up for the fleshy torn effect and push it back down again and of course now we've got that overhang I can uh, pull and blend the green stuff in and out of that and it's going to make a much smoother surface look like it's going to look like it swells up towards the top now that's not the greatest result uh, but this is me fiddling with everything I'm showing you the full scale size of the ideas and then we're going to make a smaller version right, now we're going to start working on the smaller version uh, which you'll find will work for land raiders rhinos and uh, hell brutes things like that so this sculpting tool has actually got a round this sculpting tool has got a convex side that uh, works really really well for making a perfectly smooth uh, puncture hole into the top of this green stuff just be really gentle with this one. You can buy these wax tools off eBay. That's all they are is wax sculpting tools. I'm going to make a series of these uh, little chimney stacks. I'm going to use that same tool because it's about the same size. And get just one ball of green stuff. I'm going to put in three holes for this one. It's completely up to you how you uh, build the base of this thing. Just want to make sure they're uh, big enough to fit the chimney stacks in. And later on we're going to build over these as well, with more textures. As you can see they just fit nicely in there. It's entirely up to you how um, tall you want them and how short you want them as well, um, or what size you want them. I did find it might have been better to uh, glue those in and let it set, because I did find that I needed to leave the whole thing to set after a while, um, just to make it easier for me to sculpt on it later on. So now we've got something resembling the back of a Nurgle tank or Dreadnought. Now to build up the shape and size so it doesn't just look like round bits of green stuff, all I'm doing is rolling the skinniest of sausages uh, with the green stuff, laying it over there. Um, any excess you can pull down over the round bit at the bottom and then I'm going to use a sculpting tool to gently ease that against the side of that chimney. doesn't matter if you push it down too flat as long as it's almost seamless because it's going to look like flesh or mold or gore just running up the side or dripping down off of it. The other way to do this quite simply is to then get a uh, sharp bit of tool and where it goes to a point to make it look like it spreads out or it's veins as well um, just push the very center of that tube that you've made down and pull away because as you pull away a sculpting tool um, and drag it, it makes the two parts next to it, um, two part, the two parts either side of it stretch really thin and also pushes them down. Whereas if you pushed it the other way, it would, um, yeah, it would uh, force the green stuff to bunch together. As you can see, I've just done a few lines of that, and uh, unlike the big projects, you can see this actually uh, making sense. So what you can do with these is you just keep adding those on. Um, this is my uh, favorite technique for doing this. 
Although I'm going to show you what happens when we take that textured material we had and uh, do that one as well. Also find the Stanley knife blade worked really well for this because you can cut straight down the centre of that green stuff and it separates into two parts. And because you're putting pressure on that bit, that's when it's going to start sticking. And at this point I'd not let the base of this set, so that's why it's moving back and forth a little bit and it made it very difficult for me to um, sculpt on it properly. So I recommend letting that whole thing set before you start working on this. Again we can easily glue uh, warts and other details on like we did on the large ones. Uh, you can super glue these on. I always pre-roll these balls at one side anyway, I've actually got a little pot full of uh, green stuff balls that I've just made out of spare green stuff when I finished the project. There's no point in letting it go to waste. So now I'm going to use the technique I was using before, I just mark some lines off in there. Unfortunately while doing this one I didn't make the bit of green stuff here quite tall enough. So it didn't go over the top of the chimney, but even that um, can be used quite well. Leaving the top of the chimney stack poking through with the fleshy bits around it. And then just paint that bit of the chimney stack um, an off colour. If the outsides are green, just paint that an off yellowy brown so it looks um, grotesque. And then give it a Athelium camo shade wash. And it'll look natural and blend in with everything. Because with Nurgle, no one... You can't really tell what's supposed to be what a lot of the time. But what I don't like to see when people make Nurgle is just a, a bunch of holes stabbed into green stuff. And what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm just going to lay it around the outside of the other chimney. Then I want to feed that into the bottom. Now those bits that go around the bottom there, they are just excess from before. But I like to leave those on because when we put a skin texture over this and start pulling bits of that away, they're going to start showing through and it's going to start adding extra depth. As you can see it wasn't quite tall enough to go around the top of the chimney but I did kind of like the look it gave up. So now I'm going to make another hole in a very thin bit of green stuff and you want this quite thin and also very soft at the time. Because we're going to put that and stretch that over the top of one of our chimneys. Now if you're doing this on a vehicle, which I was doing but I didn't want to attach it to my vehicle as it was just for the video, you would glue the chimney part that you've made down or drill into your vehicle, then put your chimney part in and then you can blend this layer that we're doing now from the armour to the rest of it and that would be the point of this particular layer is to blend in the armour or the other fleshy parts to the model and making sure your chimneys are bonded really really well. So what I'm doing here, instead of gluing that to the chimney, I'm pulling that away. So now we've got the chimney layer, we've got those layers of veins and parts coming up, and then around the outside there is another layer of flesh wrapping around that. And when that when that would get painted, um, there's lots of layers of detail. Also just using the side of the sculpting tool there to uh, start pushing a layer of that green stuff around the edges of those warts. And what I would do in the future there is just do another piece later on up the other side and then blend that in so it looks like the warts are protruding from the flesh. And what I'll do sooner or later is I will go off camera and just start fiddling with a, fiddling with this once the back's set. Start putting more holes and more shapes to it. It just stops your Nurgle looking flat and uh, plain. So just an example of what this is for, so you can see, now it's on a Nurgle tank alongside everything else and it's not a standalone little piece, you can see how that works and how you can add that to your uh, detail work. You would just bond that in there, but as I was saying, if I was going to permanently bond that in there, that last layer of green stuff would have gone on why it was bonded and I would have blended it all into the armour work and uh, everything else. But you can make as many of these chimney stacks as you want and uh, save them for later on and then glue them on so you can make loads at once, stick them to all your tanks and uh, you get quite a good result. So thanks for watching guys, um, I do hope that helped and I don't think it was the greatest of my green stuff tutorials. So I am 
almost out of ideas of things to make but not just out of ideas i'm running to the limits of my capabilities but i would like to push so if you guys have got any ideas of um what are the green stuff tutorials i could i could do or what i could make out of green stuff uh, leave a comment and a special thanks to a uh, a lot of our patrons now who help support this channel so we've got Dwack, Warren, Love Minis, The Oak Boys, Joe Spearpoint, Ludwig Hoffbauer, Kit Lindquist and Craig Baldwin. These guys are our Patreons, they help support this channel every month. Uh, if you want to join Patreon and get early access to all of our videos, like a month's worth of videos ahead and other cool content, go check uh, out our Patreon, links in the description. And a big thank you to The Outpost to our affiliate links. Um, they sell brand new hobby stuff at a second hand price. 40k hobby tools paintings all that link in the description and uh, so that's all from me guys thanks for watching uh, hit that subscribe hit like share on facebook and we'll catch you in the next one